number four. Mark chapter number four, we will be reading verses 35 through 41. And our theme for this morning is going to be, in the short time that we have, is going to be, what manner of man is this? It is such an important portion of scripture that it is written in every one of the synoptic gospels. Matthew writes about it in chapter number eight. Luke writes about it in chapter number eight also. But Mark writes about it in chapter number four. I will read verses 35 through 41 from the King James Version in your hearing. And the same day when the evening was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? I want to use as our theme for this morning, what manner of man is this? Can y'all say that with me so we can be together in unity? Say, what manner of man is this? There you go. Thank you very much. Let us pray at this time. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, as we come before you, we ask you that you shower down your blessings upon this people, that your Shekinah glory might ever be filled today, O oh God. Touch him right now individually and collectively, O oh God, that your name might ever be glorified. We can't do a thing without you, O oh God. We exalt you in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. In our consideration for this morning, one of the things that we recognize is, is that when Jesus steals the storm, we have heard so many accounts of the word of God in their storms in lives. They were fishermen and Jesus would move across seas and across bodies of waters and sometimes storms would arise. And so we find within the scriptures that there are storms and Jesus and the, the apostles and the writers always use them as metaphors for the issues of life and how Jesus deals with those issues of life that for surely come up. As we embark upon this short undertaking or this short study for this morning, one of the things to remember is this, is that the boats that they uh, rode upon, the boats that they entered in, they had the ability to go through the storm. It never was that I can read or remember hole in the bottom of the ship that the vessel, that there was a breaking down of the vessel, that the vessel was not secure enough to be able to withstand the storm or the water. It usually was the issues that were outside that were attacking the ship. The ship had the ability to ride the waves. To, the ship had the ability to go through this situation. But it was only the potential for death and drowning when it was something as simple as that that's on the outside getting on the inside. Y'all follow what I'm saying? 
You can go through a whole bunch of stuff if you just don't let that stuff on the outside get on the inside. You got to learn how not to carry it in your mind, not to carry it in your heart, and you've got to learn that the vessels that God had prepared you is able to take you through. Now, are you going to go up and down? Or are you going to get a little queasy in the stomach? Most assuredly. But the real deal is, if you just don't let the stuff on the outside get on the inside, you're going to make it. Somebody ought to say, I can make it. I'm not going to carry nonsense. Somebody ought to get to the point and say, I'm going to make it. I'm not going to carry out, uh, uh, outside stuff on the inside. I'm going to trust in the ability of God. This portion of scriptures for you Bible scholars is also very noteworthy because of something else. Because as Jesus was leaving someplace where he was on his way to, he was on his way to Capernaum. Capernaum is a small seaside city. It is the city where Jesus did more miracles than any other city. Most people think that Jesus did more miracles in Jerusalem, but that's not true. Because where Jesus grew up at, he could do not many mighty works there. Because the people only perceived him as Mary's baby, as Joseph's boy. So he did more miracle, he healed more people, he opened more blind eyes, he raised more people up off of sickbed in Capernaum than any place else. The problem was this, when you look at these verses in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you find that this is their interest into Capernaum. This is them, Jesus saying, listen, get in the ship and we're going to make it over to the other side. The other side is where they were going to get out and they were going to be in Capernaum where Jesus was going to be revealed. He was going to be revealed as the eye opener. He was going to be revealed as the lame healer. He was going to be revealed as the marriage binder. He was going to be revealed as the way maker. The problem was is that as they had to get over there, that in they were in the ship, if you will, the Bible says that the wind and the sea arose. Don't you know just before you start seeing the ability of God make a way out of nowhere, the devil gets busy. Somebody might say, well, that wasn't the devil. Oh, yes, it was. Otherwise, Jesus would not have to have rebuked the wind, rebuked the sea. But the Bible goes on to tell us why. Why? Because the devil comes in there, amen, to say, you're not going to make it. That he comes over there, making them be afraid. And that's why after Jesus spoke to the wind and the way, he said, why are y'all afraid? What he really was saying was, don't be afraid of the devil. When I told you that you were going to make it, so I can reveal myself that we're going to make this thing. You might have some trouble sometime. You might have to go through something sometime. You might have to deal with some queasiness in your stomach. But honey, it is not your demise. We're going to make this thing here. What you've got to decide is know that I'm on board the ship and that I care about you. And we're going to make this thing. We're going to make it from this shore to that sure why because God has got to be revealed for who he is somebody ought to say devil you just trying to scare me but I'm not giving up yet come on come on y'all talk to him I, I, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna quit preaching no way you might as well help me devil what's going on here Devil, you trying to frighten me. You trying to make me deal with what I see. When I'm a man of faith, it's not what I see. It is what I believe. It is not what I experience. It's what I receive from God's word. So devil, Jesus has already told me that I'm going to make it. So you might try to make me have a hard time here. But the first thing I'm going to do is not let what's on the outside get on the inside. I've got the ability to go through this thing. And the only way I let it happen, the only way I'm going to be destroyed, is if all of that water that's on the outside get on the inside. And if I were you, if you've got some water on the inside of your boat, honey, you ought to take your hands and start scooping 
that stuff out. Amen. You ought to tell that devil and say, I'm not going to be destroyed. I'm going to make it because it is in Capernaum that we're going to see the ability of Jesus. Amen. Exemplify. We're going to see another side of God. Amen. Like we've never seen before. All I've got to do is stand the storm. All I've got to do is test. Amen. Hold on and hold out and know that God's going to bring me through this situation. Come on, y'all. Y'all stay with me here now. I only got a few more minutes before I got to go on to something else here. As we go on and we start dealing with this thing here, the Bible goes on to tell us, it says, listen, the same day, said, let us pass over into the other side. And when they had sent them away, the multitude, they took him even as he was into the ship. And there were also little ships with him. And it says, and there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. What it is saying is, is that the water got to the point that it got full. You see, Jesus was letting us know that when that water started getting in the ship, it got full there. Come on, somebody ought to deal with this thing here. Have you ever got to the point that you've had it up to here? Amen, that you couldn't make it, that it seems like it is just full in your life? You've got to recognize that Jesus left this here on record so that he could declare unto you that when I say that you're going to make it and I'm on board this ship, even though it seemed like I don't care, I want you to know that I I do care. Come on, somebody stand with me here. Now, Jesus had told them that. Let me just teach it a little bit here. When they go on to that, the Bible says in verse number 38, it says, and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him, and they said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? You see, sometimes it seems like that there is a God that is unconcerned about you. Sometimes it seems like that God is not concerned about what's going on in your life, about your job, about your children, about your health. Why? Because you've got to go through something. What I love about the disciple, they might have been afraid, but they were not so afraid that they didn't ask Jesus the question. They said, Jesus, do you care about us? Jesus, will you make a way for us? And in that question, a man was hidden, if you will, or asked in the tone, Lord, save us. Lord, we're about to perish. The ship is about to go down. So it was not just a rhetorical question. It was a question that had to save me on the end of it. And don't you know that Jesus arose? Whenever you get into a problem, learn how to cry out and say, God, I need you to save me. Lord, I need you to make a way. I did all that I know how to do. Hallelujah, but I need you to save me. I need you to make a way for me. I need you to keep your hands of protection around me. The good thing is, y'all stay with me here before I make a getaway here. Don't you know that there are other places in the scriptures where the disciples were beaten up about in a storm. Jesus spoke to this storm and he calmed this storm. He calmed this storm because he wanted to reveal that I'm God over the atmosphere. I'm God over the deeps in the water. He said, I'm God and I can do anything. It was not necessarily, amen, just to calm the fears, hallelujah, of the disciples because there are other places in the scriptures where they were out there in a storm and the storm would arise about them and the storm never got squelled. The storm never went down. I'm reminded, if you will, in John chapter 6, God had walked by and the nation, I mean the, the 